Hello, and welcome to the Power Your Advice podcast. The Power Your Advice podcast is designed to bring financial advisors new ideas, why those ideas should be considered, and how to implement them into your business. This podcast is brought to you by Advisorpedia, the best place for advisors to grow their minds and businesses. And now, please join your host, Doug Heikinen. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Today, we are live at the Market Council Summit, and we have Rusty Summer with us, who is the Managing Director of Strategic Partnerships for Flyer Financial Technologies. Welcome, Rusty. Good morning. Welcome. How's Miami been so far? I like Miami. It's like Vegas without gambling. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) So, um, Flyer Financial Technologies, not a name that a lot of people know yet, so tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, so Flyer Financial Technologies, we, we're, I think we got our start in the business as an infrastructure company, and we provide, uh, through our really large and broad trade network, access to markets and brokers and custodians, and we do a lot of the trade routing, and many of our partners are here today. So our partner firms are firms like Orion, Riskalyze, Tamarack, so we're a little bit like Switzerland. So we're right in the middle, and we help support a lot of that. But on top of that, there are things that pe- we do that people don't really know about. So integrated into our trading network are portfolio management and order management solutions. And so we really kind of from end to end through the portfolio management and trading of portfolios and that implementation piece support then the routing and execution and allocation information. So the full workflow from beginning to end. Let's talk about your background for a little bit. How have you seen the investment management industry change over your career? Are you trying to date me? <laughs> So, like, <laughs> you get me kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like a lot of us, we've we've been through the business for a while, and you know, starting as an advisor, running and building large product platforms, many years in fintech. I think you know we've seen the industry evolve from one that was kind of rife with conflicts, to really trying to find its way to kind of moving to things being very homogenized. Right? We've gone from you know, advisors kind of doing what they do and having kind of a terminal amount of clients that they can serve and help to you know, going the other way and saying, well, everything's model-based and everything's just automated. And it, you know, how do you really deliver on you know, your value proposition and work with clients where they are to deliver solutions that help them? And I think we're at a point now where, where technology is now enabling advisors to come back somewhere in the middle so that they can still be incredibly scalable and they can really meet their clients where they need to be and where they are in their lives and their, their um, you know, uh, kind of transition, like kind of as they're moving through the different parts of their lives. And they're able to deliver on that. And I think, you know, a really good example, like right now, is direct indexing. Like, it's really exciting. And, and I don't really like the word. I think the word's kind of wrong. Because does it really matter that it starts with an index and moves somewhere else? Really, I think what you're talking about is you know, delivering on you know, personalized investment portfolios at scale. You're kind of sitting down with a client, and I think imagine this. Sit down with your client and walk through the story of, hey, tell me about yourself. Tell me what you're doing. What is important to you? What are you interested in? What don't you like? What are you absolutely against? And as you go through that dialogue and that interview and that discovery, coming out the other side with a portfolio is based upon exactly what they told you, not based upon product, not based upon, is it SMA, is it UMA, is it um, individual stock picking, but saying, this is the outcome of what you said during the interview process. Marry that up with risk management, and then you've got a portfolio that matches off exactly with what they wanted. And I think this is really, like, it's a tidal wave moment. Maybe it's your indexing. It could be my index. I mean, we support people who do this. We support clients here who are doing direct indexing and creating those personal portfolios at scale. We're working with global uh, asset managers and uh, index providers to help them implement kind of that last mile. Like after they do the optimization, after they do the interview piece, you know, how do you then implement? And we're helping them with that implementation component. While the rest of the world is spinning fast with technology, our industry is notorious for being slow adopters. True. It's, it's sad. But there's been significant amount of progress. What two or three trends will you be following closely in the next year? 
So trend-wise, right? I think there are a lot of things going on. So I hit direct indexing, personal portfolio to scale. I think that's one thing, you know, we hear Schwab talking about it. We hear other firms working on it. Um, I think that broadly, larger firms are more open to collaborating with smaller firms. It helps them kind of fill gaps. It helps them get to market faster. It helps them, you know, address issues and enable them to maybe deliver on things that they can't deliver on today because they have other priorities. There are a lot of opportunities to work with firms who are very specialized and good at a certain thing without disrupting your own business. And I think, you know, we're one of those firms. Like, we, we help people in that delivery and implementation aspect. And so we're here to support that and support all of our partners. And that's why I said earlier, we're kind of like Switzerland. Like, we're here to help you do better at what you're doing, be it at the enterprise level or be it at the advisor and the RIA level. Like, we're here to help you service your clients and serve them well. Technology is directly impacting various roles in the front, middle, and back office. How has the role of the wealth manager or asset manager changed or evolved over the last five years due to this digital transformation shift in the industry? Yeah, I think you know, my opinion here is that the value proposition of the investment advisor has fundamentally changed. And as it's changed, we've kind of gone from a place where um, you know, advisors kind of work their own hours. When you were the, their client, like, you had to call them when they were there. And through the advent of technology and, um, you know, I think the robos, whether or not they were successful initially, they certainly are now, right? People realize, hey, there are different ways to engage with, with their investments and their, their providers, and they really want more access. They want more information. And so as we've seen that happen, you know, that value proposition had to, has had to change for the advisors in the industry. They have to provide more service, more access, more capability, and to some degree, they have to allow their clients to engage with them on their terms. And I think that's a fundamental change. And so I think that's one thing. You know, there are also, I mean, there's a conversation about fee compression and, and, and how do you as an advisor, you know, I guess, you know, combat that. And maybe it's not that you combat it, but maybe as part of your value proposition, you're thinking about other ways that you can service your client effectively. Can you provide financial planning, even if it's life financial planning? Can you provide... Um, a referral net network so that when people need uh, trust and estate planning, you know, do you have a network of uh, attorneys that you work with? Are you part of a CPA firm and how do you integrate those, you know, those different aspects of tax planning and tax preparation with the investment management piece? And so I think there are a lot of ways that advisors can combat that, um, that but that it has to be thoughtful and it has to be a uh, concentrated effort and it can't just be Oh, one-off, how do I do this? You know, maybe I can solve this because I know a buddy. I have a friend who does this. You really have to think and, and serve, serve your clients and, and, and have that mindset. How has Flyer differentiated itself from what has quickly become a crowded fintech marketplace? I think we've differentiated ourselves in a number of ways, but you know, we work with people to help them solve their needs and issues that they have with their, their organizations and with their clients. Because ultim our ultimate measure of success is, is if we enable that firm to do better by their clients, then we're successful too. And I think that that should be true of any partner that you work with. Because as you go out and work with partners who are solely interested in their product or their thing, it may be good and it may be cool, but they're they don't have your best interest in mind always. And I think that that's where we come in. And, and I, you know, I think an example, like just kind of make it personal. I'm a marathoner. I ran a marathon on Sunday. I flew from San Francisco to Miami on Monday. Our CEO, he's a long distance swimmer, open water swimming, like the English Channel, escaped from Alcatraz with sharks. Like Shannon, our marketing person, she's a barrel racer. We have a semi-pro cyclist. We have a former competitive downhill skier as part of our, in our organization. We're all, I, I hate to use the word athletes, but we're always looking for an edge to make us better in our personal lives with the sports and things that we're interested in. We t bring that same mindset to our work and to our organization. We're always trying to find that edge. We want to do well by the people around us, and we are constantly thinking about ways to do that. 
I think we differentiate ourselves that way. I can picture all those. I just can't picture what a barrel racer is. <laughs> um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, give me three takeaways or pieces of advice for firms looking to upgrade their tech stack. Yeah. I think this is the right. This is the million dollar question for a lot of firms. They're happy and sad. They like it. They don't like it. And you know, I think sometimes firms kind of look at like I want to rip it all out and start over. And a lot of times, I think that you know, the dollar cost sometimes can be justified, but the human and operational cost is a lot of times pretty significant. And so I would just say, you know, if you're thinking about these things, think about what's really important to you. What do you really need to operate effectively and at scale? How can you be most efficient? How do you serve your client? And how do you want to deliver on your investment thesis and your, and your value proposition? If you can answer kind of those top two questions, and then you can think through what the workflow is. Beneath that, then the technology starts to filter up and you know what's going to work and what's not. Fortunately, right now, as technology evolves and, and the kind of ability to develop uh, kind of comes down and makes it a little bit more um, cost effective, you do have an opportunity to really think about best in breed. You can pick some of those best solutions and bring them into your ecosystem without ripping out everything. Portfolio management and order management and trade networks. It's a perfect example, right? We don't have to be accounting. We don't have to be performance reporting. We don't have to be client you know, portals. You know, we can just be that operational piece that gets the implementation piece done. And so you can start there, or you can start with another piece. You don't have to do everything at once. And I think that that's generally a good way to start for most folks. I'm of the mindset that financial services talks about itself. Product providers, advisors, fintech, and we forget who it's all for, the end investor. How can the industry do a better job of educating the end investor so we ensure the wealth of America? Well, talk about a loaded question. Right? <laughs> but, but I do think, it, I think it's relevant. Um, and I think it goes back to kind of what I talked about at the very beginning. Um, you know, as an as a industry, we started off kind of a, a one end of this where it was just you know advisors were doing the best that they could with what they had. And as technology advanced very quickly, and we had major disruption in what was available to um, firms in terms of technology and to investors, um, you know, through maybe robo, right? It kind of spun the other direction, and things were very homogenized. And I think we're, you know, in terms of delivery, right? Does it really matter whether or not you have, you mentioned product. Does it really matter whether or not you have a REIT ETF in your portfolio? That doesn't make it much different, right? Everybody kind of had the same thing. And now technology's coming back to the middle. That pendulum swinging, swinging back to a point where advisors are really going to be able to deliver personalized solutions to clients, meeting them where they are, but at scale. Advisors really shouldn't be at this point confined to that, that kind of theoretical limit of 275 accounts, let's call it, right? Typically, a, a, an advisor kind of hits that number of accounts, and that's their ceiling. They can't support it. But with technology, you should be able to serve more clients more effectively. And I think we're at a point now where firms really who are forward thinking and thinking about delivery, value proposition, and how clients want to interact with their advisors can really now support more and support them better. Do we ever get to a point where, Rusty, you're commuting back and forth between Walnut Creek and Charlotte, you're flying all over the country for your company, that your advisor gets an alert from Alexa or something that says, Rusty's spending a ton of cash, and your advisor calls you and goes, Rusty, what are you doing? I think we should be there. All right. I think for clients who want that level of... Um, service and advice, I think it should be. And I think we're kind of close. I mean, you think about it. If Chase, whatever bank you have, you probably get alerts sometimes when you spend more money at a place than you should or you normally do. And I think that that type of interaction is coming. Maybe we're not quite there yet, but I certainly think that that's on the way. And I think that that kind of goes back to your question. Like, how do we make sure that as, um, you know, a community, you know, how do we make sure that the wealth of our country is really managed effectively, and we ensure that people have what they need as they transition through life, right? 
as that life map changes. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'll get, I'll get you out of here on this. What are you most excited about for 2022? Uh, 2022. Kind of hoping COVID goes away. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that doesn't seem to be the case. So, you know, look, we're excited to continue doing the things we're doing. We're continuing to expand our platform. We're continuing to invest in our people. We're continuing to work with and expand our relationships with our existing partners. And we're going to continue to deliver on our brand promise and the promises we've made to our clients and prospects in 2022. I think that's where we are. Rusty, thanks so much for joining us and good luck. Yeah, thanks. Great to be here. For those who want to know more about Flyer Financial Technologies, visit flyerft.com. Please follow us for all the latest updates on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, all at Advisorpedia. For everybody at Advisorpedia, our producer, Jakey Beard, and the Power Your Advice podcast team, this is Doug Heikinen.